In late December, reports of 2019 NCOV, also known as the coronavirus, came in from the Chinese city of Wuhan. It didn't take long before cases of the virus were confirmed outside of China, including in North America and in Europe. The outbreak managed to spread across the Pacific Ocean to an entirely different continent in a matter of merely a few days, exposing the threat that diseases may pose in the 21st century, where epidemics risk turning into pandemics in a globalized world. In the 14th century, the world was struck by the Black Death, a plague which swept from Asia and westwards across the continent to Europe. It's believed to have eradicated approximately a fourth of the world's population, and a whooping 30 to 60% of all Europeans. That means that the Black Death may have killed every other person in Europe, not taking into account other outbreaks of the plague since. The Black Death made its way from the plains of Asia to Crimea through the Silk Road, and from there via rat-infested merchant ships to the rest of Europe. Even back then, 700 years ago, a distant disease developed into a pandemic which could have annihilated humanity. Then what could a similar outbreak lead to today? The contemporary world is more connected than ever, and with the introduction of jets, it is possible to travel from one end of the planet to the other in a matter of hours, compared to the weeks or even months that journeys of similar length could take before the last century. But the increased mobility also means that people can bring biological threats such as viruses and bacteria with them to entirely new places, which otherwise would be protected from such pathogens due to a difference in lifestyle. The relatively new phenomenon of megacities with more than tens of millions of inhabitants means that a disease can spread rapidly compared to the rate in rural areas. Convergence points such as train and metro stations, markets and airports can entail bumping into hundreds of persons on any given day, allowing for diseases to instantly find new victims. The Earth's immense population growth not only creates conditions ripe for a quicker spread of pathogens, it also increases the contact points between animals and humans. The corona and Ebola viruses are both suspected to have spread through direct contact with animals. Estimates point that 60 to 80 percent of all emerging infectious diseases to be zoonotic, meaning that they originally stem from animal hosts. Of these, around 70 percent are believed to be wild animals. Deforestation and other human activities may alter the behavior and mobility patterns of animals and risk increasing interaction between infected animals and humans. Thus, in addition to being able to spread more rapidly, additional types of pathogens pose a greater risk of being transmitted to humans in the first place. The rate of urbanization is particularly high in developing countries, which oftentimes also undergo a rapid natural population growth. In low-income countries, it's not uncommon for rural to urban movers to settle in the outskirts of cities, in physical environments which are prone to the spread of diseases. A high population density combined with a semi-rural lifestyle with livestock and inadequate sanitary conditions entails a higher risk for infectious diseases to get a grip. Less money also means less access to healthcare, and the lack of vaccination remains an issue for poor urban residents. While huge efforts are put into containing and preventing diseases from spreading further, there are entities whose goal may be to intentionally use diseases for various goals. The term bioterrorism may connotate futuristic scenes of high-tech lab-produced diseases, but truth is that biological weapons have been around for quite some time. Ciro Trevisinato, a microbiologist turned historian, claims that evidence points to the use of rabbit fever in warfare as early as 1300 BC. While biological weapons isn't a new concept in itself, its forms and methods of use are without a doubt vastly different in the 21st century. The previous century entailed a rapid evolution of weapons of mass destruction. This included state research on biological WMDs. However, containing these weapons meant a risk for misuse, and the national programs of various states were largely scrapped following international agreements such as the Biological Weapons Convention. However, the convention does not address non-state parties such as terrorist groups, and it does not provide for any supervising mechanism. It only takes one laboratory to be the source of a pathogen, intentionally or unintentionally. This also means that next-generation diseases consisting of genetically modified pathogens can get in the wrong hands, rendering the knowledge on classic grade A pathogens such as smallpox somewhat dated. Tied to the concept of genome engineering is the development of antibiotics. The use of such medicine, and more specifically its overuse, poses another threat to the treatment of diseases. 
Although millions of people's lives have been saved and eased by the medicine, its effectiveness inevitably becomes obsolete over time, as the bacteria it's intended to fight develops and becomes resistant to drugs. The erosion of antibiotic efficiency is starting to become a global health crisis, leaving suffering and death in its trail. And it's not just the use of the drug on humans that is eroding its efficiency. The use of antibiotics in the animal industry may affect humans through their consumption of animal products, allowing for resistant bacteria to spread to humans. It's important to understand that national borders do not really matter for a disease. Pathogens do not need passports or visas, and thus diseases originating in unsanitary environments, where the access to aid is lower, can easily spread beyond its epicenter. However, as has recently been demonstrated, a disease does not necessarily need to become a pandemic in order to have global repercussions. The recent outbreak has had a noticeable impact on the world economy, with an enormous manufacturing sector and retail being affected by suspensions and a city of more than 10 million being on lockdown. A large part of global companies has a substantial part of their businesses in China, and events contained to the country has effects for consumers worldwide. Thus, a relatively local disease can have a global impact, despite its physical absence on places other than one region. The issues addressed in the video differ from one another, even if they result in people getting sick and in the worst case dying. Some are easier, or rather less difficult to counter, such as uniform measures to decrease the use of antibiotics when it's not strictly needed, or investing in anti-terrorism and disease detection mechanisms. However, a decrease in urban movements and worldwide mobility is very unlikely in the foreseeable future, as this usually means improved lives for people. Therefore, it can be said with certainty that new pathogens or new strains of them will emerge in the future. However, as epidemics pass, the knowledge of combating them through the treatment of people and use of vaccines develop, giving a fighting chance to meet such challenges. Thank you for watching another video from Global Outlooks. If you enjoyed the video, please leave a thumbs up, and if you haven't already, subscribe in order to get alerted when new videos are dropped. Until next time.